What's going on everybody? Welcome to the Commodore 64 video manual. So basically what this is, is um, me going through and showing you how to work each system. I'm going to do this uh, for more of the complicated systems that I offer on my systems on my machines. Um, just so you guys understand how to work a system because I know that some of these could be a little bit difficult and um, especially one like Commodore 64 where um, the actual uh, real console itself was pretty complicated to work and navigate so um, this will hopefully show you how to do it uh, so that you can actually play the uh, different systems on here and um, you know you don't go to one thinking it doesn't work and it's just user error so it'll help you out it'll help me out and everybody will be happy so we're gonna get started here with Commodore 64 and the first thing to know is that this one you're gonna want to use primarily a keyboard and a joystick and as you can see in the theme you can actually see that that it had a keyboard and there's also a joystick because that's basically how you played all of these games. It was a combination of both. So I've tried to make it so that you can use an Xbox 360 controller as much as possible. But at the end of the day, you are still going to need a keyboard because this was intended to be played with a keyboard. So uh, an easy way of knowing that is if you go into the system, on the bottom right there, you're going to see a picture of a keyboard and a controller. And that's how you know for every system, this applies to every system, when you go inside of it to the game selection area, if you notice any sort of icon there like that, that's going to tell you that you need those specific controllers for this system. And in this case, you have a keyboard and an Xbox controller. So that's giving you a hint right there. All right. So now that we know that, let's go ahead and exit out of Hyperspin so that we can get started with these instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and do control shift escape, select hyperspin and task. And that's going to bring me out to my desktop here. I have a bunch of stuff open that I'm going to be showing you guys. So don't mind all of this right now. So first thing I want to do is uh, show you guys with the different controller options that are compatible with my system, what to expect. So starting with the extension emulator edition controller, if you have this, you can play Commodore 64. You're going to be able to play a lot of the games um, just using this without a keyboard. Um, so here's what how everything is assigned. This first button here is assigned to numpad 1. Numpad meaning, if you look at a keyboard, far right, those set of numbers there, that's what I'm talking about when I say numpad. The ones above the letters on the keyboard, those are just regular numbers. The ones over to the right are the numpad numbers. So you don't really need to know exactly why it's assigned to numpad one or anything like that. But basically, this is going to be your fire button for, you know, any games like 1942 that you fire with or anything like that. This second button here is going to be your space button. And space is used to, it's kind of like an enter start type of thing and if you're in, in, a, in a game like 1942 that's you know your secondary button so it'll do like the loop okay this one up here is assigned to Y for yes this one N for no that's when you answer the questions in the games and then this one here is going to be assigned to warp now warp is um, <clears throat> a feature that you can use with this emulator to skip through all the long intros and stuff like that it'll like the name says it'll warp through and it'll speed everything up so you can get to the um to the actual game quicker that's what that does now your start menu is is a duplicate of space because space acts as start and um if we go over here we can take a look at that uh those buttons better so start um coin one is going to be to change joystick ports now you're not going to have to do that because i've already set this up so that it switches the joystick ports automatically and if you don't know what i'm talking about again this goes back to you being familiar with the actual console itself it's something you had to do on the actual console itself some games worked on joystick port one some worked on joystick port two and you had to kind of know which which to use for which any particular game you were playing again this is all automatically been set up by me so 
um, hopefully you won't need to use that. But if you ever get to a game and your controls are not working, try pressing coin one to see if it switches the port and then you can play it. But you shouldn't have to use it. Uh, so moving on, your pause on the other side, your pause is going to be assigned to caps lock on the keyboard. Um, now caps lock in the real console would uh, trigger run stop and that's needed for some games and we're going to go through all of that i'm going to show you some examples of some games that require those kinds of inputs all right so that is it for the extension controller now if you have the x arcade joystick you can't play commodore 64 at all with it out of the box so if you want to play commodore 64 with it what you have to do is you have to program one of the custom modes in the back. Take a look at my um, how to program your uh, XRK joystick video that I have. I'll link it down below. But you'll want to switch your, your your programming switch on the back to one of the other programmable modes. Usually all the way to the left is a good one. That won't have anything that I've programmed for you. So you can flick it over to that position. If you're standing in front of it, and you reach over to the back, just flick the switch all the way to the left. That'll give you a programmable mode that you can use. And you're gonna wanna go ahead and program these inputs into it using my tutorial that I linked down below. So as you can see, this is what I was just talking about. This button is numpad one, this one is space. You're gonna do Y and N, W and Alt. Now this is a little bit different than the extension. The extension, this button just does both at the same time for warp. And this one you're going to do alt and this one w and this one and then when you want to do warp you press down alt and then hit w at the same time okay this one would be escape enter space these are again the numpads meaning all the way to the far right of your keyboard you're going to do numpad four eight six and two numpad five for this one h for this one and caps lock for this one once you do that you'll have the same capabilities as someone with an extension controller um, obviously you'll have to start the game and then flick the switcher in the back over to this mode so that then the, um, you know, the joystick recalls this configuration so you can play. Then when you're done, you flick it back over so you can play the rest of your games. <clears throat> okay. So that is the X, the, uh, X arcade joystick configuration. And if you're using a, um, Xbox controller, this is what your, configuration looks like so we're gonna open up x batter here and i already loaded the profile for commodore 64 and if you can see here again it all repeats itself you've got space that acts as start you've got your space also on this button for fire i'm sorry for the uh, loop um if you're playing like 1942 and you know it's gonna be your secondary button for any other game that uses two buttons you have your numpad one, which is your fire. You've got up here on these buttons on the shoulders and triggers, I put numbers one through four so that you can use those numbers if any games require them. Some do, they'll ask you, you know, enter number of players or whatever. So you can enter one, two, three, four. Again, I'm trying to make it so that you don't have to use a keyboard um, as much as possible. Uh, that's why those numbers are there. If we go to this second tab here, and the way on the controller that you access that second tab is by pressing the back button here. That is That acts as a shift button. So when you press that, you get a secondary set of keys. Okay, so here you can see your escape, which is for every system when you do back button and start at the same time, it kicks you out of the game. That's what that is. Then here you have an enter. Okay, you have your caps lock. Again, like I mentioned before, so you can do the run stop that I'm gonna show you in a bit. You have yes and no, so you can answer yes and no to the questions in some games. And then up here, you've got your Alt-J, which is the joystick swapping thing that I was just talking about on the extension controller, which you should not have to use, so try not to press this button ever. You have numpad plus and minus, which again, you will need for some games. You have your Alt W, which is the warp, and this is pretty much the one you're gonna use the most on the controller on this uh, second tab here when you press the Shift button. And then you have Alt S and Alt L, and those are for save and load. 
okay so you can actually save your state of the game and load it um, and that's basically it for the xbox 360 controller now hang in there because we're going to go through all of this showing you actual examples in the game so it'll make a little bit more sense to you when i do that so for now let's go ahead and close this out and we're going to go ahead and test a few games here so we can go through and show you all of these things in the actual game and just remember that you know i've said this a few times already but keep in mind that i've tried to make it so that you do not need a keyboard as much as possible but you will still need a keyboard for a lot of these games because they were designed to be played with a keyboard joystick combination so let's go ahead and start easy by doing a 1942 here and i'm going to start this up and i'm going to actually exit full screen so that i can show you some other things while the game is going on so we're going to open up xpatter here now the first thing uh for this game for example you have this initial screen here right and um this would take a while so what i like to do is go ahead and access my warp mode and if you remember, that is going to be pressing the back button. And then if you remember the assignments for this secondary screen here, warp would be this top button right here. So the right, uh, the right shoulder button over here is going to be your warp. Okay, so you are in the game, you would press back button. And while you hold that down, you can see it went to the second screen there, you would press the warp button. Now you can see that that goes really quickly now. So remember that space acts as your star button. So if you're using the controller, you would press the star button, which would send in the space uh, keyboard input. If you had a keyboard, you would just press space on the keyboard. If you had the um, extension controller, you would press player one start, which is space if you remember from earlier or if you had the X arcade joystick and you programmed it like I showed you, again, you would press player one start, which also sends space. So let's go ahead and do that. And now you see everything goes by really quick. Now you obviously wanna stop this warp mode when you get to the menu. So again, you press back and you press the um, Alt W button again on top. And now that brings it back to normal speed. And here's where you're gonna go ahead and answer questions. So. It's asking you infinite planes. You know, this is all up to you. Do you want infinite planes? Yes or no. So again, on keyboard, you would press Y or N. On the extension, you would press, uh, let me show you that. You would press yes here or no here. This is from where, where I mentioned earlier. Um, if you look at the X or K, this is the same thing. Yes or no. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So using, I'm using the uh, the uh, uh, Xbox controller now. So I'm going to go ahead and press the back button so I can get to the secondary screen. And I'm going to say infinite planes, yes, which is the green button, the green A button, as you can see on the screen. Uh, engage auto fire, I'm going to say no, visibility, no, infinite rows, no. I'm going to say no to that as well. Here it says to adjust with plus or minus and return to end. So again, shift button, you can see that I assigned plus and minus to the joystick. So if I go down, you can see that start at level changing there. If I go up, while well, this is while pressing back, you can see that that changes as well and it goes up or not. I guess you can only go down. All right, well, that's how you do it. now. If you had a keyboard again you use the num pad all the way to the right plus and minus and if you had an extension or xrcade you're out of luck this is why i said you always need a keyboard anyway because um certain things you just can't program over there but um that's not even something that's necessary you can just skip right over that if you didn't want to you know bring out your keyboard um so once you have that selected i believe you press space or actually it looks like you press enter in this case. So again, this is something you have to be familiar with or kind of play with till you get the hang of. So after you answer that question there, once you press enter. So again, I would press shift on the keyboard and that enter, as you can see on the screen, is assigned 
to the blue button or X. So I press that. It asks me another question. View the hidden part of the game. I'm just going to say no to that. Shift N. And again, if you are playing with the keyboard, you can just, you know, hit enter. Everything is right in front of you. So there's no guessing. Okay, so now we're in the game. I'm going to press, I just press the fire button. Normally, that's what you do to start. And as you can see, we're, we're playing. So it's just a matter of getting used to it. And if you're familiar with the actual real Commodore 64, this stuff should come in pretty, pretty easy to you. So, all right, let's try another game. Let's try one that has uh, some other input requirements. And I believe uh, 10th frame asks for the, for the uh, run, which I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so let's select 10th frame and launch that. And I'm only showing you through Rocket Launcher, obviously, because I'm doing this, this tutorial. You'll be starting all these games from Hyperspin. Now you just want to wait for the screen to go away. Okay, so here we're in the game. I'm going to press either it's either going to be start or, or the a button which corresponds to space or numpad one in this case it was start so as you can see here on top it says space to leaf or leave i guess they mean and uh run stop to exit so these are a set of instructions here so if you want to scroll through these instructions you would read and then you press space and you keep reading and keep reading if you don't want to read these or you're done, you would press run stop, which again is caps lock, and you will remember that from the actual Commodore 64. So in my case, let's exit full screen here. I'm using the Xbox controller, so <clears throat> you're going to see that caps lock is assigned, if you hold down shift or back button, is assigned to the yellow Y button. Okay, so... I'm going to go over here and I'm going to press shift Y and there you go. If you have the keyboard caps lock, if you have the extension controller, I, okay. Yeah. I, uh, mapped that to pause. So you would press pause and that would be your caps lock. All right. So once you're in the game, you know, press start, that's usually the case. Now, here's where you're going to need a keyboard. So if you were playing this game, no matter what, you'd pretty much need a keyboard. And let me full screen that again. So now it's telling you press L for league or O for open bowling. So you need a keyboard to do this. So let's say O. And then it's telling you to select number of players. Now, that's why I said, remember, on the Xbox controller, I assigned the top. Uh, top buttons for one two three four so you can use that for this game um, but as you just saw for the previous menu you needed the keyboard anyway so um, you can do it on the xbox controller here or you can do it on the keyboard i'm going to press one on the keyboard and that's selected number one you type the name etc etc all right so let's go ahead and exit this game and let's do let's do one more game here let's try Airwolf. Okay, so there it is. It says, please wait. And while any of these screens are up, you can try pressing start, see if it skips them. It doesn't, so just wait. I don't know if it wants me to answer anything. Let me try. Oh, yeah, it does. So it's asking me those questions up there just like before. So I just did shift or back button and, and red B button for no. I'm just going to say no to all of this. And there you go. The game starts. Press start. Again, it asks for, you know, it has this manual thing here. So you can press space to keep reading or run stop, which is caps lock, which is back button, yellow, uh, white button on the xbox controller or pause on the extension um again it's asking you more questions i'm just going to say no no and there's the game
and I'm playing. All right, so I think that is a good amount of examples for you guys to kind of get the hang of how this is configured and how it works. And again, this is going to be much easier for you if you are familiar with the original Commodore 64. And uh, one more thing I'm going to show you here is how to save. So 1942. Let's start that up. Now, the thing to keep in mind with saving and loading the save state on this is that you can only have one thing saved across all games. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. And if you remember, again, to save, it would be the back button held down. And here you have save on the left and load on the right. And those are going to be your triggers. So if we go into 1942 and start the game, I'm going to go into warp mode to skip everything. Get out of warp mode. All right, I'm going to say no, 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 no. I'm going to say enter and no. Okay, press fire button. Now I'm playing. So let's say you're playing this game and you want to save your progress. I'm going to just let it go a little bit here. Okay, so right here, I want to save my progress. I am going to press shift, save very quickly. Now it's saved my save state right on that mo on, at that point right there. So if I then press shift and load, you see that I'm back to where I saved it. And what I was talking about before is that this is only going to apply to one game across everything. So if I were to load a different game right now and I hit... Uh, you know, if I hit shift or back button and I hit the load button, even though I have another game running, it would load this game at that save state. Okay, hope that makes sense. So you cannot save save states for each game independently. All right, so let's get out of this game and I'll quickly show you what I mean. Okay, I think you could even do it from this menu here. So if I did back button load state you can see that it loaded 1942 even though I'm in 1943 all right so just keep that in mind and I believe that is going to be it for this one um, hopefully you guys learned something uh, for those of you that already have the system and already have Commodore 64 on there um, if you've tried to play it before you probably thought it was broken and not working or something if you're not familiar with it so that's the point of this hopefully this will will show you how to actually use the system and I'm going to be making more of these um, in the coming weeks so hopefully you guys enjoy these let me know if you have any suggestions or any further questions as usual in the comments or you can email me and uh, if you don't have Commodore 64 installed already on your computer make sure to check out my other tutorial that I will link below on how to actually get Commodore 64 on your system if you purchase one of my systems a while back and you don't have Commodore 64, that's going to get it on there for you. So check that out. And um, that's going to be it, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up below and I will see you guys on the next one.